Oh, God, I just realized it's April Fool's Day, April 1st. Oh, this is, this is the day that people do silly things to other people. I have to be really careful, I guess. Um, first, I want to thank everybody for a great live stream yesterday. I had such a great time. I so uh, absolutely adore the community that's evolved on these live streams. So, and thank you, thank you. I can't wait for the next two weeks to go by and we can do it again. I love that it becomes thematic, you know, talking about food and movies and all kinds of things. It's, it's really been cool. Um, and then this coming Saturday, uh, day after tomorrow, is my one-on-ones. I'm looking forward to that on Skype and FaceTime for all the people that have signed up uh, for that. I just got off of an hour and a half um, wonderful uh, Zoom conference, and uh, I'll fill you in on that. And then I also want to say today uh, is a celebration of Jeff Picaro's birthday. I think he was going to be, he would have been 67 today. Uh, still one of the most remarkable musicians I've ever known in my life and one of the dearest people I ever knew. And uh, uh, in 30 minutes, I'm going to be... Um, jumping into a Zoom celebration that Neil Wilkinson is doing from London. Uh, and it's uh, and Neil was the drummer I did, uh, toured with Veronique Sanson with, and he did some work with Barefoot Servants with us, and just a magnificent musician. And uh, last time I saw him, I uh, was working in London, and he was playing uh, the Carol King musical, Beautiful, and I went to the theater and saw that and hung out with him there. So, um, so happy birthday, Jeff. I wish you were truly here to be celebrating it with us. But um, you're always in my heart. You're one of the greatest ever. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the only downside is when we were going to do the live stream yesterday, trying to get it set up with Aaron, I, I, I use an old... Um, I have an old MacBook Pro from two. It was a, it was a rebuilt in two thousand eight, I think, and um, I think it's coming to the end of its usefulness because we had one hell of a time. I was freaking out. It usually takes us about five minutes to set up the live stream, and it took us almost a half hour yesterday. Things just weren't loading in and stuff. So I may be off to see my friend Steve Wiley at Dino Computers today in Pasadena to um, bite the bullet and start looking at getting a new laptop. I, I hate the idea of it because I love the old ones. They have all the different ports on them. You don't have to buy any external crap. I've got, it still takes CDs and DVDs in it. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's so convenient. And as they try to make all these things hipper and lighter and then suddenly you have to buy a box load of other stuff to carry around with you to plug into it to do the things that this already does but i'm hoping maybe steve will find something going on with this that that might be reparable and we can get this thing working properly and i can you know keep it going for longer but i back it up all the time but it's it's kind of scary the idea of having this thing go down on me so We'll see what happens. Today, this is the finger I'm using. Um, so I'm th I was thinking about music today, and I had a couple of ideas. And needless to say, like I normally do, I completely forgot about them and ended up doing something else. And um, having done uh, Kaz Fuller um, yesterday, there's th that genre. I mean, it's just we're, we're all this town was so alive with great singer songwriters. And I had the great fortune of being able to work with so many of them. And one of my absolute favorite people I've ever recorded with is Jackson Brown. I loved touring with them when we did the Running on Empty tour and recorded that live album. The first album, certainly, with all those brilliant songs. I mean, everybody always kind of goes back to, like, Doctor My Eyes and stuff like that. But some of his, you know, internal songs on that album were just absolutely exquisite and I've had really the great pleasure of, of doing a lot of work with Jackson over the years so I decided to go back and um, and jump into The Pretender uh, today. Um, after playing all of Phil's show the other day it's just there's was so much going on today. I mean I've been at it since the crack of dawn. Um, just hasn't been time to sit down and, and bone up on, a, on any songs uh, today. 
uh, for this. So I'm just going to go uh, once again and just kind of close my eyes and, and go back into what was going on in my mind when, uh, when we recorded these things originally. Um, so the first song I'm going to do on here is, so this is Jackson's The Pretender. We cut this in 1976. And um, I, I, I love that copious notes has become a big deal on, on this uh, stuff here. But it's really the only way to, to try to do any of this right is to really do a little bit of research beforehand. Because the main thing is I always really want to try to credit the people that were involved in, in this. A certain amount of information is available and other times you're just kind of looking and going, why couldn't they have put some information out on this stuff? Uh, especially when it comes down to like the technical staff of who was engineering, who was second engineering, who mastered, uh, things like that. And uh, so, but the first song I'm going to do here is The Fuse. And uh, on this track, it's Jackson, of course, on everything. It's Jackson's album. His name's on the front, not mine or any of us. Um, so it's myself and Russ Kunkel and Craig Durge and David Lindley are the band on this track. So it's called The Fuse. So let's take a écouté. Kind of like the Pink Panther here. Lindley. Nobody like him. God, he's amazing. It's coming from so far away, it's hard to say for sure. different textures and moods in this. It's really amazing. David just creates atmospheres that are so beautiful. Craig.
of those beautiful long extended endings where people just stretch out and I remember the first time I heard Lindley play, he was in a group Kaleidoscope. It was around 1968, and they were opening for the Mothers, Mothers of Invention. And I just remember sitting there kind of watching this guy on stage, just going, wow, it's unbelievable. And to have had the great fortune of doing so many projects and being on the road with David was something pretty special. Um, he's one of the most gifted musicians I've ever worked with. And at the end of our run as the section in the late 70s he started playing with us also and there's a great bit of concert footage that's never been released i think it was from um the pantages theater in hollywood uh it was a james taylor concert and the section opened the show and david was with us on that and i've seen it it's just never been mixed or put together which is really a drag i've been trying to sort this out for years um but man, just kills it on it. He's so amazing, playing violin and lap steel, all kinds of stuff. I mean, anything with strings on it, the guy eats it up like it's breakfast. Amazing. Okay, this is a song called Daddy's Tune. Um, and on this one, it's myself and Jeff Picaro. Happy birthday, Jeff. Today is his, as I said, his birthday. On drums, Fred Tackett and Waddy Wachtel on guitar, Fred Tackett from Little Feet and all kinds of projects that we've done over the years together. And it's Craig uh, Durge also, great Craig Durge and David Lindley and um, Chuck Finley, Dick Slide Hyde, uh, Jim Horn and Quitman Dennett are the horn section on this song. Jim Horn played um, on our, I think the second section album. Jim and I did lots of things together from I Am Woman, you kind of name it. We did, when he lived in L.A., he moved to Nashville many years ago, but we did a lot of work back in the 70s when he lived in L.A. and, and did lots with um, with Dick Hyde and, and Chuck Finley. Chuck's one of the great trumpet players in this industry. So um, here's Daddy's tune. My dirty wind blows through the sky. Jackson has just such an identifiable voice. Wishing I could follow Though among the regrets that I can't get by There are just one or two Unkind things I said to you Daddy, what was I supposed to do? Digs in deep. No sooner did I hit the streets than I met the fools that are young for me. All in search of truth and bound for glory.
David is so good. I'm just going to move right along. This is Sleep's Dark and Silent Gate. Um, I'm just, as soon as Jackson sings his first word, you, know, you just know it's Jackson. Um, and he's such a beautiful writer. His, his prose, so much of his stuff, um, in the same way with James Taylor. If you just saw their music written on a sheet and there was no music involved, it was just the lyrical thing. It's just beautiful prose. These guys are really good. So Sleep's Dark and Silent Gate is Fred Tackett, myself, Jeff Picaro, Craig Durge, um, and David Campbell did the string arranging, which is like I talk, half the stuff I talk about, there's David Campbell on it doing the arranging. Uh, he's still one of the most in call. And his son was the artist Beck. So it's another one of these things, the, the, the family dynastic aspects are always pretty amazing. And Val Garay was the engineer on this. So here we go, Sleep's Dark and Silent Gate. <laughs> Craig is such a wonderful pianist. God, I'm so blessed to have him all these years and in the section. Sometimes I lie awake at night and wonder where my life will lead me. Waiting to pass under sleep's dark and silent place. Damn, he's good. He's really good. So the last one I'm going to do for you now, and then I'm going to jump off and head off to London for the Jeff Picaro celebration that they're going to be having on Zoom. Uh, and this is the title track to the album. This is The Pretender. This feels so much, this always feels so much to me, like you really see the continuity with Running on Empty and all these things that came together during this period. It's really... My little homage to Lou Reed and uh, get this some tenths in there. I'm gonna rid myself of help in the shade of the freeway. Gonna pack my lunch in the morning 
David Crosby and Graham Nash sing well, background.
tender. Now, this is a point of contention in my mind. Now, listening to that, um, on the on the album, I believe that bass part, the bass seat, I, I did a bunch of songs. I think Chuck Rainey may have played on a couple of songs on this, and Bob Glaub played on some. Now, listening to The Pretender, it it sounds to me like that. I'm credited on, on, on Discog and all these, but listening to it, it sounds like Bob to me. And if it, if it is Bob, I certainly don't want to be taking credit for it. And, uh, I'm going to see if I can fix that. I'll check with Bob. And, uh, but Bob's been touring with Jackson for, for a long time. Bob's one of my favorite bass players. It's the kind of stuff, if I get called for something, I can't do it. He's like one of the first people I, I would call to say, can you do it? And he's done the same with me. We've been friends for decades and decades and decades. And uh, um, he's a wonderful bass player. So that might be him on The Pretender. It's, it sounds to me like, like his playing. So um, I know I'm on the album, but, um, but sometimes they get credits a little, uh, little wrong. So um, if that is you, Bob, I love you, Bob, and you sound great on it, uh, as always, and uh, take good care. And I am going to uh, now go visit uh, London and uh, see how the Jeff Picaro um, Zoom is, is going on, try to contribute a couple of stories to that. Then I'm going to take this, my laptop over and see if we can give this thing a little bit of CPR, <laughs> try to keep it alive a little bit longer here before I have to jump into getting something new. Just, I hate it. Because when you start transferring everything over, stuff doesn't work. And it's just, it's to me, it's always a pain. So I, I try to milk these things as long as I possibly can. But um, take good care. I will see everybody tomorrow. And um, again, thank you for a really great stream yesterday. I loved it. Just loved it. And, uh, and for all you characters who signed up for Saturday, I'll also be seeing you on Saturday. And then Sunday, we load in and start band rehearsals. Oh, I can't believe it. It's going to be so great. And we got a bunch of actual real work to do. We got some recording we have to do. We're doing the, the closing music for the documentary film. We got to get that in. And there's some other stuff going on that they, they need us to actually record. Um, but other than that, we're going to start working on the new material so we can get back in the studio, hopefully in May, and do another album that'll come after the one we're going to be releasing in August, which we cut before the pandemic, which was supposed to be out in November. It's all the year just turned into whatever it is. But let's just stay safe and everything. And thank you again, everybody who's working to keep everything afloat. Um, you are the uh, frontline workers. You are the heroic people of this period. And I can't thank you enough every day. So take good care, and I will see everybody tomorrow. Okay? Bye-bye.